Um, okay, it's like, very nice to be here, and I need to thank you, my audiences. Okay, you finally make it. Okay, this is the last last stop of the day, and you're probably already great to breakfast. Right? Um, so thank you. Um, so okay, so I, I, I trimmed down the, the, the topic. Okay, so this like hidden valley search. Okay, when the hidden valley uh, search means cosmological constraints, so it's really just trying to combine the two uh, frontier. Uh, so the word is. Uh, uh, collaborate with uh, Yushin, uh, uh, Luna here. Um, so probably you will see the paper just actually this year. Um, <clears throat> so uh, just a quick word about the dark sector models. Okay, so dark sector models, they, the dark sector, okay, maybe just a sector of particles that just do not quite talk to standard model. They weakly interact. So just even if they are there, okay, so just um, we cannot see them uh, because of the weak coupling. Um, so, uh, well, they exist some models, okay, they buy you some merit, and uh, we are interested in, okay, if the dark sector contains a, a confined engage group, okay, so you have this dark two cities, sometimes for different valleys, um, so, so uh, they buy you more merits, for instance, uh, neutral naturalists. Um, just quick words here. Um, so, in general, hidden valley models are good, um, but, okay, so there's like uncertainties, for instance, due to the um, weak interactive nature. Some of these, okay, so uh, hidden valley model, uh, just dark hadrons, okay, when they are produced, then uh, they become long neck particles, okay, because uh, they decay so slow. slow. Um, so this, like, uh, just not to scale cartoon, okay, showing you just, okay, what we have. Um, so the lifetime, okay, is actually is like a large uh, free space, okay, so uh, we can start from uh, crop limit, of, um, and uh, the lifetime is actually not so bounded, so it actually can be greater than like uh, lifetime. It can be greater than one second or ten to eight meters. Um, so what we have right now already, okay, these are on the run. Um, just covering this, uh, we have uh, this big boy and at least not as big boys here uh, in the future. Uh, but uh, just roughly speaking, um, above one kilometer, okay. So we kind of started losing them. Okay, so there's like no direct grasp. So okay, this is. Okay, not as good as expected. So here's the basic idea. Okay, so we set up. Okay, uh, so the conclusion here is that cosmology can tell us. Okay, actually can tell us. Okay, where and how to look at these dark hadrons. Okay, this is a general story. Okay, so we we, we choose some benchmarks here. Um, so we, we consider heavy meteor case here. So basically, uh, just make sure they are on it. Um, so for combining hidden sectors, so there are, okay, in general, some, okay, family of dark hadrons. Uh, here we just borrow some uh, standard model terminology. So eta here is the pseudoscalar, so the lightest sky. Um, omega is the vector mass, so we focus on these two. There are other uh, scalars, okay, we, we will focus on them later. Um, so if you're leaving now, so this is, uh, okay, the, the conclusion, okay? Um, so the cosmology bound, okay, um, is setting some upper limit on some of the components, okay, which needs to be like of order meter or, or less than that, okay. If you if if like the, the the all the components above this limit, then then you have trouble, okay. Even though they are not directly constrained by cosmological constraints, um, and uh, well, in general, that works for a wide range of uh, mass, but uh, here uh, motivated by this, uh, but. Okay, just motivated by uh, collider searches. Okay, usually it's, we talk about this, uh, the the, uh, the collider constraint yeah, around GeV and uh, well, not not too heavy like one GeV or too light. 
Oops. Um, so, okay, so how it works, okay? I, I, I just promised you, okay, some cosmology constraint, but how is that? Um, so, um, so let, let's imagine at the beginning, okay, the universe evenly populated, uh, just stop set the, and the standard model, so they just, after repeating, just evenly generated. Um, then, okay, after, okay, when the universe become cold, and you have so many dark populations around, and when the temperature is cold enough, then only the lightest guys count. Okay, because just um, Boltzmann's question. And then you have, okay, many um, pseudo-scalars like guys around, okay, which slowly decay the standard model due to some reason, okay, and uh, I think uh, eventually we found this pretty general. Uh, and, okay, heavier guys, okay, say omegas, okay, so uh, they can mix with some uh, dark vector portal or scalars, okay, mix with some scalar, usually it's just standard model mix. Uh, and the fast decay to standard model, that's visible. and. Uh, well, they do not cause trouble themselves, but um, but these guys, okay, slow. Either they are slowly decaying or being stable, okay. They will eventually become troublesome, okay. If you have too many of them around, okay, around the BBN era or even later. So uh, there are a lot, lot, lot of uh, cosmological constraints. I mean, usually uh, BBN is the uh, benchmark ones. Um, so a fast decaying component is trying to, okay, just um, deplete the dark hadron number density. Um, so. Uh, basically, through this elastic transition processes, okay, this is a strong interaction, uh, strong interacting process. So uh, just um, these things, okay, pay okay some momentum dependence and the jump to this heavier excited state, and then they decay. Okay, this is the mechanism. Okay, then you deplete the dark hadron uh, number density. Is that so um, yeah, it's uh, it's somehow similar to these uh, correlation or uh, co co scattering. Uh, dark matter papers, but they're not exactly the same. So it will be just like maybe like slightly more details. Okay, so this is a like brief thermal history. Um, so just in the short, okay, so these heavier ones, okay, so the co-moving number density of these heavy ones are just normal, okay, so they're just decaying away, so they do not cause trouble, as promised. But, okay, so the light guys have to pay because, okay, Okay, because of Boltzmann's suppression of this uh, transition, if you look at this, this is actually a mass gap right here. So actually they deplete the number density drops not as fast as these um, decaying guys. And, and actually, okay, so how, how fast this depletion actually depends on the mass difference, okay, between them. And uh, also how fast, the, uh, I mean, how fast these heavier guys, okay, excited state decay. Um, so, they combine, okay, so it depends on these uh, details, okay, so determines, okay, at the BBN era, how many these light hadrons are out and uh, how much trouble they cause. And uh, well, if you just fast enough, okay, everything, uh, you have very small red density, okay, at that BBN era, then we all get. Um, so we also have analytical form, but it do not always work and not as precise as expected, so we go to numerical results. So two typical um, benchmarks, okay, dark photon portal, okay, or gauge portal case, okay, BBN um, search that people have mentioned, and all the standard order mixed portal, okay, um, usually considered in these um, uh, different methods. Um, so in dark photon mo uh, portal models, we do see, okay, vector decays pretty fast because it's just directly mixed with this uh, so-called dark photon. Uh, this is a tree level for this, so it's relatively fast. Um, so this. Uh, Pseudoscalar do decay slowly, okay, they can decay, either decay like uh, two body, four body, okay. Uh, but in general, they pay for more subtraction of coupling and mass, okay. Uh, just uh, look for these uh, papers for details. Um, so just give you an impression, okay, how fast these decays, okay, we go to these uh, two plots and uh, look at the blue contours, we do see we span, okay, from the very prompt limit to just where we cannot have just beyond the reach of life, so a wide range of possible lifetime. So when we impose cosmological constraints, okay, here's the BBN constraint. Um, so for smaller mass gap, okay, so there are weaker upper bounds on the decaying lifetime, but it's still within 10 meter, okay, within collider reach. For moderate mass gap, okay, because the transition become harder, we don't, so we produce more of them, okay, the constraints are stronger and uh, well, the sea tile bounds is actually less than one centimeter. Um, similar story happens to uh, Higgs model, for portal models. Okay, so uh, uh, too complicated sort of plots, but uh, short conclusion, uh, 
you also need short lifetime. Okay, in this case, you predict heavier mass, so they have only heavier mass because it's a scalar uh, couple, actually coupled to the mass of the fermion. And uh, they actually, um, because mix with Higgs, actually uh, there are hydronic decays of this particular digest. Um, so far, we, we already know that it's like right now, we, we finished the cosmology part, so what about like at the collider? Okay, so actually it's a pretty complicated thing and everything is on the run. Um, people have proposal. Uh, so we have focused on these exotic D decays because Higgs portal are just more like well understood or like more discussed. So we, we kind of here <laughs> focusing a little bit more on the D decay, the exotic decay, because we somehow just can also mix with the dark proton and the decay to a non uh, particle and a uh, missing ET. Um, so, yeah, so we, we consider the LHCD, okay, which is very good, so they have higher resolution. So, in principle, <coughs> it's, they're assessed to smaller lifetime, uh, smaller length scale, um, but also at good at like low multiplicity uh, final states. Uh, for CMS Atlas, they have higher luminosity coverage, but well, larger backgrounds in general. Um, so, here is like different shades, okay, based on uh, similar. Okay, slightly different uh, benchmarks. The green shades and the gray shades are when, once they are produced, these dark hadrons are produced from Z decay, the region that, okay, they have more than 10% chance decay in the effective um, um, detector <coughs> volume, okay? So here, the green shade is like the LCP, okay? So in the short lifetime scale that uh, you have 10, more than 10% chance to decay in LCP effective um, volume and also for FC. So um, currently, okay, this is like a sloppy estimation. Okay, uh, okay, preliminary result. Okay, at the end of run three, okay, we can, if you have dimuon displaced vertex, then you can constrain it down to 10 to the minus six um, Z uh, exotic branching ratio and the comparable uh, FC result. Um, so for Higgs portal, um, things are, Slightly more, just more tricky uh, because um, okay, uh, so it's actually digest and the shorter decay, like okay, in general. So actually, the the bounds okay from these uh, studies uh, actually say that uh, alpha CMS constrained to uh, these exotic uh, branching ratios down to ten to the minus three, and XP can only do like four to ten to the minus three. Um, so what about like um, if these dark hadrons actually go under some like hidden strong dynamics, okay, so you have that should just, you, you, you emit a dark gluon and actually become jet-like, so the final state become two dark jets. So these emerging jets are previously discussed in the previous, uh, in, in this study, and uh, LCB can actually give the leading bound for short, uh, short length cases, but uh, actually this is like quite model dependent. And uh, well, some numerical results are still in work, and uh, actually, Xinxia in, in Xinxia's uh, talk on Thursday actually, well, probably discussed some uh, alternative, but closely related scenario, so stay tuned. Uh, so I know what you guys are thinking, so I'm just stopping here, and uh, well, this is a take home message, so welcome. Um, uh, in general, um, these dark mesons, uh, in general, they, they uh, for instance, uh, in this case, uh, if you have a, if you have pi instead of like an eta, like uh, you have some something that remains, I, I do plot like if the, uh, if you produce that uh, red density exactly uh, like dark matter, but in principle, uh, they, they, are, they can be there, okay, so if you have some um, symmetry that, um, that makes them stable. Okay, then they can be dark matter. If not all dark matter, then probably a small fraction of it. Okay, in principle that's possible, but that's more of a pen. The ones that decay slowly is it's not stable. Yeah. Well if they take the case slowly then it's not stable. And actually that's where the constraint is strongest. Yeah. So if, if the lifetime is less than ten to the twenty five seconds, the lifetime okay actually Constraint is very strong. Yeah, so you mentioned about the uh, the uh, the uh, decay uh, 
so uh, how uh, how long is the mass that we send? Uh, it can be uh, a sequence of uh, the, the uh, converted photon. You know, it, it, it decays to the B plus B minor and can limit the uh, converted photon. Um, for converted photon, I'm not sure, but the, in that case, I, I am imagining the Imran mass of the outgoing electrons are yeah. uh, just relatively small. Uh, in our case, uh, it's like probably about one GeV, so uh, uh, below that it's hard to say because it's a lot of uh, hydro physics uh, involved. And uh, um, yeah, that's basically, and, and that thing in general exists, I, I think, in the LLP searches. I think experiments have the way to like tell that from just uh, converted photons. Yeah. The, the, the maximum mass around the 10 GeV is about 3 uh, how much is the property dependence? Uh, how? Property length of? Uh, of the uh, That photon itself is basically pumped in just all over this part. Okay. Yes. Do you have any UV complete model? UV complete model? That's what model dependent. Here we, we discuss the cosmology, so we only need to talk about the low energy spectrum. So if you have, e the, it's welcome for you to figure out some model, but it's like welcome people to consider Cosmology. You take the lambda is so small for tiny. Uh, lambda? Yeah. Uh, lambda is the dark confining scale, so it, in principle, cannot be larger than the dark. Just have a dark. Yeah, dark is it's not not some. Yeah. So in, in principle, it's comparable to the the whole world we live with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Has a difference between the yeah. Uh, yellow and the pink. Ah, okay. Good question, though. Um, actually, that's a BBN uh, lepton and the okay, it's too small. Yeah, BBN lepton and BBN hadron uh, constraint. So, if, if some, for some reason that um, the, the super scalar decay is lepton fitting, okay, so it's mainly because of lepton. Then so it's, the constraint is not just one. If one second, you really calculate all the. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I can, sh if you want, I can show you that in the back of slide. Okay, yeah. very nice. Okay. Thanks, uh, let's thank the speaker again.